Well, those of you who follow us might remember over a year ago, I was sitting on a toilet downstairs when we were installing the Excel NE and the Centrex 3000 NE, both toilets made by Sunmar, and we did some reviews. Well, now it's at 15 months, and um, well, we're going to talk about some issues we had, whether we like it, and we're also going to compare the two toilets because they are pretty different, so stay tuned. First off, after 15 months of use with seven people in the house, now six because I sent one of my kids off to college, uh, it has been continuous use and we've been very happy with the systems. However, there are some minor maintenance issues that we've run into and that's why we decided to do this update because right now I'm sitting on a toilet that said this because we had a little failure in one of our parts down there. So let's take a closer look at that. This is the Thetford Style 2. This is an RV toilet. It's got a porcelain bowl, and you saw that in the opening video. And what happened is, this is the, the lever that you step on in order to flush the toilet. And what happened was, my daughter had stepped on it, and her foot slipped off, and it sprung back up, because it's a very, very tight torsional spring. It popped back up, and it popped back up so hard that it broke off one of the little drivers for the flapper valve. Now, unfortunately, you can't just buy the driver. You have to buy the whole kit, which is fine. I can use extra seals and stuff and keep that downstairs. But right now, I'm going to have to go ahead and take that little drive arm out of there and uh, put, it, put the new one back in there and reinstall this, and the toilet should be back to good. All right, I'm going to give you a little close-up here. This is the drive arm that broke, and this actuates the flapper valve on the inside of the toilet. As you can see, this little part here broke off. This is in the closed position, that's in the open position. This is the fulcrum and the torsional spring for the foot pedal, and this is the water valve back here. I know people have had an issue with it leaking. Ours is not leaking, it's really good, but you can get parts for that too. So I'm just gonna remove this, put this back in, put the handle on, and the toilet should be good. So the handle is back on and I'm just checking functionality here. If you push it part of the way down, it fills the bowl. And then when you push it all the way down, it opens that valve. And again, the problem was there is a very tough spring in there. And you saw that in the video. That really pushes up hard on this. And when my daughter's foot slipped off, it slammed up and cracked that little piece off in there. So gotta be careful not to let that happen. And uh, if you do, the parts are pretty easy to get. Well, now that I've fixed it, I want to prevent it from happening in the future. So what I've done is I went to the barn and I got some anti-skid tape by 3M that we used on our carriage. And I went ahead and cut a piece and put it there. The problem is that um, when you have socks on, that plastic is super slippery. So your foot can slip off to the side really easy. But with this grip tape now, it grabs your sock and it won't happen. So hopefully I won't break it again. So before we get back to the toilets, I want to talk about something that we did in our kitchen here because we like to keep all of our food scraps and feed them to the chickens and the pigs. So we had a container in our kitchen that was a little composting container. You've probably seen these online and we throw all our food scraps in there. Well, after a couple months of using this, we uh, found out that we started getting flies here. We thought they were fruit flies. Uh, we didn't quite know what they were, but I put a fly strip up there and they started gathering more and more. One day, I took out these carbon filters, and it was loaded with hundreds or even thousands of eggs, okay? And I knew immediately I had to get rid of that, because uh, the other thing I noticed was the flies were migrating in the house. Well, those flies had migrated downstairs to the perfect breeding environment, which is composting material. Now, these are house flies. These are small black or brown gnats and they like decaying food and decaying matter, organic matter. And so they essentially took over down here. And when I called the company, they said they're probably fungus gnats, although I couldn't really identify exactly that because the, uh, the eggs were slightly different color, but they did the same thing. They overtook the composting toilets. Now, where I found the eggs was actually on the bottom of the drawer down here where you empty matter out. The entire bottom was covered with the, roughly around a thousand eggs, I would say. 
very small, brown, about the size of rice. They would hatch into maggots, and the maggots would actually live in the evaporation chamber. And so when I opened it up, I saw the breeding ground, essentially. So she gave me some pointers. One was to put a surfactant in the evaporation chamber, which is basically dish soap. I put some Dawn dish soap down there. And then I went to the hardware store and got some pyrethrin. Now this is an organic uh, pesticide, although you do have to handle it very safely. Uh, this can be used on a lot of different insects, but pyrethrin is less toxic than other chemicals. And so you have to use it longer, about three to four weeks, as opposed to some other chemicals, which you could use for maybe two weeks. But you have to stay on top of it because if you have any eggs, any maggots, any flies at all, you're gonna have a thousand more nearby. And that's what we found. As far as eliminating flies, it was much easier, much quicker to get them out of this. It has easier access to it. It has a smaller evaporation chamber and I was able to basically empty it out and restart it. And within a couple of days, I had eliminated all of the flies, maggots, and eggs from this particular uh, device. I also put fly strips above it, the, tape, the sticky tape fly strips, just to see if I had a reoccurrence of them. But in this room, before I got rid of them, it was completely clever, covered, but after a couple of days of treatment, it was completely gone. But I continued to uh, simply treat it periodically here and then here just to make sure I did not have a reoccurrence. And again, it's the bottom of these trays where they lay those eggs. That, that bottom will be filled with eggs and you'll notice that pretty quickly when they pull it out. Well, definitely over the last 15 months, the biggest issue we had with these toilets were the flies. We were able to identify it, we were able to treat it, and now we know what to look for. So I think we can handle that in the future. As far as mechanically, uh, I'm really a big fan of this NE. This, this is the Excel NE, and uh, it seems to be very, very easy, very, very uh, able to handle uh, an overload. Let's say you have uh, college kids come home, which we did, and there were five or six people using this toilet. It really handles the overload well. The, the moisture content in there stays really, really consistent. And uh, as long as you have uh, good bulk matter, I, I really had no issues with this composting at all. It's also very easy to clean out. Now I did have one mechanical failure in this particular model, and that comes down here. There is a knob down here that you pull out in order to rotate the drum backwards so that you can empty into the tray. There is, what that does is it pulls a, a plastic uh, piece away from the drum to allow it to turn backwards. Otherwise, when you go this way, it'll click and it won't let it go that way. Well, unfortunately, that broke off. Don't know how it broke off. Don't know if one of the kids tried to force it or whatnot, but it's gone. And now this can turn the right way or backwards. And uh, it's not really a big deal, quite honestly, because you don't need to have the clicking sound to determine where the hole is because you're looking right at it, unlike the uh, 3000, where you have to hear that click to know that your hole is lined up with the pipe. Uh, the other thing is, if somebody does turn it backwards, all it does is dump into the chamber down there and you just empty it out. So, one mechanical issue, but overall, this to me is a big winner. So this is the Centrix 3000 NE. I really love this one too, but it has a lot more moving parts. It's more complex, it's bigger, and as such, more things can fail. As you can see at the beginning of this video, I was fixing the toilet upstairs, which has its own list of parts and, and things you have to maintain. So uh, the other thing is, in a video that we did several months ago, you might have seen that we actually had a flapper door back here. The access door where the waste comes into the bin fell off. And when it fell off, the contents of the drum fell into the evaporation chamber, overflowed onto the floor, and that was quite a mess. But the company quickly replaced it, sent it to me. I was able to put it together. I haven't had an issue with that uh, anymore. So as far as consistency of the compost, with the uh, Excel NE in there, you can look down every time you use it, you can look down and see it. Well, not the case with this one because obviously it's a separate toilet. So to look at this compost, you actually have to access this panel or down there or perhaps take one of them off. And what I've noticed is the consistency, in other words, the moisture content is, is not nearly like the NE. 
I really have to watch it and add or slow down on bulk material to keep it consistent. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that it's hooked to a water toilet. And it depends on who's flushing it. Some are going to put more water down, some less water. And the other thing is, every time I come down to put bulk material in, I'm guessing how much uh, matter was left in the toilet. And sometimes I guess I'm a little bit off. So probably a little bit more um, care and maintenance for this one because you have to really watch what's going on. But the thing I love about this one is, first of all, it maintains a tremendous amount. I don't have to empty this much at all. Well, last but definitely not least, everybody wants to know, does it smell? No, it does not smell. These units are self-contained. They have a vent system, an intake on the side, and a vent out the top that goes over the evaporation chamber. And that really is the only part of the system that actually has an odor. The contents inside, because they compost, they don't have an odor, and we have a video coming up showing me uh, empty that. Now, one caveat. There is an overflow drain in the back of both of these where if the evaporation chamber gets too high, it can actually overflow and leave the unit into a small plastic tube. Now, I will caution you, the tubing that they send and the tubing that you normally buy at the hardware store is gas permeable. What that means is it doesn't let liquids out, but it certainly lets gases out and you can certainly smell the effluent as it goes through that tube. Now, if it's a short tube and it's got a good slope, it's not gonna sit in there. But unfortunately, I didn't plan really well and mine's a relatively long tube and some of that effluent sits in there and gases out into the room. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise this unit just a little bit and actually go to an inch and a half PVC drain. PVC does not gas out and so it should fully contain the smell if there's overflow. But I will say this, Normally, there is not effluent overflow into that tube. It depends on the usage, the humidity, how much water is going into there, and all that. You may never have a problem. Well, after 15 months in the house, I am very happy that we bought these units. I'm very happy with the product overall. And although I tend to favor the Excel NE because of its simplicity, the Centrex 3000 NE has a great advantage because we have a lot of guests in this house. And my daughter's friends actually would go upstairs to go to the bathroom because they were a little frightened of this contraption. So for guests, uh, that seems to be a little bit more normal for them, and I like that. So thanks for watching. I want to mention that we have a follow-up video by request on how to clean this out. If you don't want to watch that, you don't have to, but a lot of people have asked us to do that. So subscribe if you haven't, and if you have, leave a comment. We'd love to read through those. We'll see you next time.